It is Gooch Live featuring Paul Rosen. Rosen's with me. And you know what? It's brought to you by the Hockey News and those great people at Sports Illustrated. And Paramount Sports Management, where I'll say it every day, until we're back there, it's good to be dreaming that we will be back there. No, hey, listen, everybody's got to do it. Uh, You know what? we got to pivot, which we're pivoting. What a great show. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to throw a curveball. Everybody's waiting for hockey, but you know what? Warren's a big hockey dude. We'll talk to him a little bit about hockey first. Look what's behind me. I like the way you said curveball, like curveball, baseball. Could have, we could have thrown a slider or a knuckleball, uh, no, off no, pit, but we'll throw a curveball. Well, in my life, because I always use these sports analogies, one is, you know, I got to pivot all the time, right? Like Every day my life pivots, but now yep. curveballs are being thrown at me. You also Man. give 110% every day. Yeah, and dump it in the corner and chase. Uh, but one of the things that I'm really good at, I was an all-star second baseman, don't forget, in yeah. Little League. Man, and you were eight, eight, the ball. eight years old, no errors. No, Little League. Yeah. I think I was 12, and then three, I had to make a decision. Three, three, Hockey three. or or that ball? other game. T-ball? Baseball. You were great at T-ball? I was a fantastic ball player. Don't kid yourself. Yeah. Oh, believe me, I'm kidding myself. No, I was. Okay. Okay. Conrad, I can't remember the guy's first name. Met him in Calgary many years ago, and he said, Gooch, had you not gone to baseball, uh, hockey, which I did, you could have maybe made it baseball. True story. I am not lying. I'm going to get him on this program. How old were you when when this happened? 14. 14. I had to make the decision at that time because I had to go to AAA. All right. Off we go. You think I'm lying? I'm gonna find. I gotta phone. I gotta look up his number. Hey, listen, but we got we got an expert. He's gonna know. He'll probably know because he's probably researched my huge baseball career. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely good. It's T-ball where that thing is. You got on the bat. Yeah, that's and, exactly okay. what you were great at. I I didn't play that, but I know this guy did. <laughs> Warren, I am not lying. Yeah. I'm not making up a story. Sometimes I'm really good at adding color, like I'm a Technicolor. Some people are black and white. You know, I just add a few colors, but true, true story. Brent Burns dies in the in in the, the Vikings uh, uh, series. What do you call that? Series. Did you know that? No. Brent, not in it. Brent Burns. Okay. I believe you. That's Brent Burns. Yeah. He's in Viking. Okay. Excellent. I Two episodes. First one, he doesn't say a word. Second one, he dies. Cool. Well, we die every day, so there you go. Well, do you remember Josh Donaldson was in Vikings? Oh, oh right. He's he's that he was in there. Really? You remember that? You yeah. don't remember what that? What are the chances of me getting in Vikings? I'm almost yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. You would have no speaking, and you would probably die off in the first episode. So, mm. Sorry, Gooch. I don't mean to. Well, what are you, you saying? Can't, you unless, you were, unless, unless you were skating out on the ice, Gooch, out in the, you know, there's, the a, better, there's a better chance. Navy. Hey, there's a better chance I could be in it without my leg and be one of those dead guys that they just like <laughs> demolished and chopped the leg off. Like, <laughs> Listen, more, that's getting morbid. Listen to this. I got two complaints. One, you guys don't believe I was an all-star second baseman in um Well, I believe you were when you were like five years old. That's not little league. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's get so that's the first complaint I got with this show already. And the second one is Warren, why didn't you call me, Val did several times, to tell me, Gooch, shut up. That 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 Brantley guy got a Bentley from the other team and he signed with the Astros. Look at that. Oh him. boy, I know. I was I was uh, uh, every well, brother and their brother got that wrong. Even Ken Rosenthal and the the supposedly the best of the best. Well, Warren is the best of the best. I want your reasoning. And before you do that, they're all Village idiots on that. So I think I could get a part. <laughs> All Go right, Michael, Michael, Michael Brantley. So, yes, disappointment. I'm very disappointed. I knew the young man. I knew his dad very well. Um, 
his dad, Mickey, when he was the hitting coach with the Jays, a good chum. We used to go out a lot, played a lot of golf together. And I heard about Michael. So when I got a chance to meet him when he was with the Indians and I was down broadcasting, I thought, wow, wouldn't it be great to have the Jays to have him? Well, unfortunately, it didn't happen. But what it tells me is a couple of things. One is that the Houston Astros realized that uh, even though they're bringing Bregman back in El Tuve, the loss of Springer in center field is huge. It's a huge gap. It's probably the largest um, name, I would say, an impact player on that team. So one, they've already lost their center fielder. Uh, to lose another outfielder with the quality of um, Michael Brantley could be absolutely devastating. Now, the Jays needed a left-handed bat. They're, they're highly right-hand bat uh, dominant. So they could have used Brantley. But what it tells me also is the second is the Jays aren't going to overpay for Michael Brantley, whereas Houston is. So you have to set your situation. You have to look at your assets. You have to look at what your true needs are. And is Michael Brantley a truly the need that they have over potentially a third baseman or pitching? No. So he's a nice to have. He's not a need to have. You're not going to overpay him like they did with Springer. Springer, they overpaid to get him away from the Mets. You know, Mets took their eye off the ball with all those uh, issues going on. They get the prize. They get the big, the big name. They've done Ryu. Now they do Springer. Now you start to go look for pitching and, and potentially a third baseman. And you say, yo, would have been nice to have him, not going to overpay. Yeah. So that's what I want to – and I'm not upset that they didn't get Brantley. It would have been really nice, but you would have then had to move a couple of guys. I still think you have to move uh, uh, Teoscar now, in my opinion, mm-hmm. anyway. I hope he's the guy that does go because even though he's got a hell of a bat, I, I don't think – uh defensively he's there uh obviously Gritcher would be a great move but nobody's going to pick that contract up thing i wanted to ask you warren now with picking up springer uh 150 million dollars everybody always says oh no free agent wants to come to Toronto." well they paid a lot of money for this guy will other potential free agents look now at toronto and go you know what? There's got to be something there. Like Springer went there. He could have gone anywhere. There's a lot of teams that were interested. Obviously, was down to the Mets in Toronto. And and asking you that, do you think there's a possibility that Brian from the Cubs could come to Toronto for his one year of his contract, make a nice deal, offer him uh, Teoscar and maybe a prospect and pick him up? Because Guerrero cannot play third. <laughs> Okay, so a lot to unpack there. Great. Um, I would say uh, I agree with you. I felt that maybe, just maybe, the Blue Jays, when they got um, uh, Springer, why don't you offer to the Mets a package of Tay Oscar and Kevin Biggio uh, to the Mets for some of that pitching, maybe some of that pitching. I know I know you're going to say Kevin Biggio, but you know what? Yeah. He is versatile, but don't forget, you've got that first round pick from last year uh, out of Vanderbilt. It's, uh, you know, sitting and waiting. I, I'm i not saying they would do that. I, yeah. I think Teoscar, to me, comes front of mind, but I think you got to package and bundle. And if you yeah. want to get some solid pitching, uh, you know, and I just thought about the Mets. Now, uh, another uh, organization that comes up is Cincinnati. Uh, and, and, and Eugenio Suarez, who's placed third base for them, uh, could be a nice fit. There's a need there potentially. So I don't disagree with you. Trevor Bauer is still right in the market for this team. Yeah. There's no doubt. Brad Hand is out there, another name that potentially could go with, uh, you know, uh, Yates in the back end of that bullpen. So they've got assets to deal with. Even if you wanted to go Real Muto, if you wanted to dream big, although I don't think Real Muto is going to, um, I think he's going to lock in uh, probably with Philly. I think he's, uh, you know, he's the savvy guy from what I hear. He knows where to get the money. I don't think they're going to overpay for him. I think they're comfortable enough with their catching position, but I don't think they're going to overextend themselves out for him. Uh, six years on a 31-year-old for Springer is about as far and deep and wide as you're going to go. Jays never usually go six years, so they're breaking norm. But to finally wrap up your point, yes, they are going to bring more pro- uh, more high price free agents here. One, your organization has money. Uh, Rogers is a $27 billion organization. Um, the Blue Jays are uh, literally a rounding air for them. They have money. They've got a commitment to their president uh, and CEO and Shapiro for five more years. Um, They've got a solid foundation of young talent that you can go win with and not just one or two years, you know, so a win and dive like the Marlins traditionally would do. And then finally, 
listen, uh, it, it's a great environment. I think everybody realized that uh, Canada takes things like COVID seriously. We, we yeah. you know, we, we have a, I've always said, I never understood why uh, free agents or guys who come here like uh, Joey Bats wanted to go elsewhere because you could be a big fish in a small pond up here, whereas you could go to some state that have the same population and get lost with all the other entities there. I think free agents here have a great opportunity and they don't realize that until they get here. And I hope that that's something that Springer can open up for the rest of those free agents out there. Yeah, listen, if you don't mind, Paul, do you have a, do you have a follow up on that? I just wanted to answer to, to Val really quick. He says, you know, is it possible that Jason Bauer with a marriage? Absolutely. In my opinion, what do you think, uh, Warren? Well, once again, like, He's a branding machine. I mean, he's got a huge market up here that he could capture. I mean, you can see he likes to put himself out there on social media. He's the total opposite of George Springer, right? Opposites attract. Springer doesn't even have a social media account. So we're not going to have to worry about him being on social media. But, you know, Trevor Bauer uh, looking for a, a home. I, I I, I just have in my heart that he he probably likes the big lights, big city. I don't think he's yeah. afraid of pitching in hey, New Toronto's York. Toronto's got big lights and it's a big city. Yeah, he's not going there. And you know what's unbelievable? We're a we're a hockey country, and his last name's Bauer. It'd be perfect. <laughs> that would you know what? That is a nobody has ever said that. That is a perfect, perfect fit there. But uh, I'd love to get him here. I honestly think the Dodgers are going to get him, but I'd love to get him. Okay, I yeah. want to take it different right now. If, okay, okay, answer that first, Warren, and then I want to change change it a little bit. No, Dodgers is a nice call. I mean, they're they're uh, out there hunting right now. They've uh, you know they've had success. They've got uh, obviously you know winning a World Series is is huge for that organization. They've got money. They got resources. You know, it, it's about what you feel at this point in time. Is Trevor Bauer enough for you? to get you to into a World Series and win a World Series. Is that enough? Or do you need to potentially, you know, do a little massaging, maybe for a, a lesser, I'll say lesser, but, you know, a, maybe not a Tier 1A or a Tier 1, but do you need to go to a Tier 2, Tier 3 starter? And do you need to maybe focus more at third base, like you said, Rosie, because you want to keep Vladdy at first? Gooch, can I ask him one really, just a quick answer, quick, 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 quick. The Absolutely. Dodgers with Turner, I love Turner. They haven't re-upped him yet. Is there a chance that they will bypass him and he could come to Toronto? Yeah, there's most definitely a chance. I mean, there's talk about him potentially being in Atlanta. Uh, I've heard his name bandied around by the Mets. There's no doubt the Blue Jays are interested. Uh, what, he's 32 years old, so, yep. you know. Still solid. Uh, yeah, no, de definitely solid. Um Obviously made a bit of a mistake in judgment with his, uh, you know, COVID yeah. uh, re-accessing re, re, uh, the field at the World yeah. Series. Yeah. I, I have a bit of a, I have a bit of a soft spot for him. I mean, to wait all your life to get to win a World Series, and all of a sudden you've been with all these guys all year, and then you know you're told at the last, you know, eleventh hour and fifty ninth minute that you can't go out. Problem is, he put the rest of the team and the manager at jeopardy. So I, I like, I, I think this team needs some leadership. So Rosie, I, I wouldn't be. Um, I wouldn't mind having him here for that leadership perspective right now. Cool. All right. Good. Just, just, say? just gonna change gears a little. We're still in baseball. <laughs> okay. But you guys were you guys were talking about uh you know pitching. So I want to ask you a couple of questions about some relievers they just picked up. But before we do that, I want to ask you, because you've been in the media for a long time, Warren. How does this Michael Brantley story spread so quickly, comes out on all the news wires. I'm a guy that's just fishing, so I'm not a big baseball guy. So I'll tell you what, that'll be the last time I go out and try and think I know anything about baseball because the first thing I get is a call from Val saying, Gooch, stop it. Why does that happen? Like, why? Like, we're talking some pretty serious people. <laughs> we're talking about some pretty serious people making that call. I can't remember if it was uh, Hazel May who was the first one who broke the story. I, I wanted someone, I heard maybe today, yesterday, that Hazel might have been one of the first few. Um, listen, <laughs> you guys know social media. Listen, I don't choose to go on Twitter. Um, it's not my vehicle of um, you know communication when it comes to news, but I know lots who do. And I think that you know we are now entrusting ourselves to outlets within social media that we believe, and and and, and I think all of us can call, fall victim to it. Like that's the problem is that you think that the source is credible, and it's not that the source isn't. It's yeah. just that you know you have to the race now gooch and this is the media it's not right. about whether you're right it's who's first first, first, right? first, first. Okay, but here, here's 
Okay, thank you, Warren, but here, and Paul, so that you guys don't chastise me. I, I am a social media guru. I'm getting better at it. And I'm watching it, and I don't do fake news. But early Wednesday, multiple outlets, including Sportsnet, and it was Hazel May that came out with this. Those are pretty reliable sources. You know what I mean? It wasn't like me going yeah. on to MLB.de or MLB. The real, the real question, China. The, the thing that got me right away wasn't Hazel. And I, I think Hazel's incredible, uh, you know, but it was Ken Rosenthal. And to me, he's one of the best. And he came out with it, too, like immediately. He might have been the second or third guy. And that what that's what threw me. That's a All great right. point. Like if Ken usually comes out with it, it's almost um, – you know, who's the guy in basketball that, uh, you know, is, is, is the big name that always has the breaking news in the NBA? Wojciechowski. Yeah, Wojciechowski. Like if Woj comes out with it, everybody says, you know, it's it's gospel. So, yeah. hey, right. I'm okay. Like well, it's it's not – it wasn't Springer. It was Brantley. It would have been worse if it were Springer, trust me. So, didn't get him. Uh, because yeah. I was trying to be that. I want to be Wojo. I want to be the guy <laughs> called Gucci knows everything. And listen, Paul, you know it. We we had it, we had the information first when the uh, eight Germans were tested positive for the World Juniors, and I was told by my contact, Gooch, you can't say anything. And I got to tell you how much it took me not to write it. It was five hours before the IHF announced it. And you did know it, but nobody knew. I know. Knew. Don't tell. Don't tell our guy. Okay, this is why this is my little bit of a changeup. I love Paul adding. To Paul, you can maybe deal with Val's. He's coming up with some good things there. George Springer, uh, he was considered one of the top free agents. So I think Paul, again, not being a, a true baseball guy, I'm learning it through you, and of course now through Warren. Um, even though I was an all-star second baseman, I think it's really important to understand that this is a big deal. Forget the name. It's, as you said, it's better that it was uh, Brantley instead of Springer because Springer was one of the hot, sought-after free agents. He signs in Toronto. It, everybody starts looking. I, COVID didn't play a, a role here, guys, because they're not even playing up here, right? Yeah. But I think you're right in the sense that some of these guys want to be in Hollywood. I think Toronto is North Hollywood. Now, I want to ask you this question. Tyler Chadwood, and then you've got Kirby Yates. Both relievers, I did, and I. The only reason I know that I know that uh, my producer has put it up for me, but I did already read the Kirby Eight sign, and it was like five point five million, not a big deal. Talk to us about that, Warren. You guys, both you and Paul, had talked. Well, we need some pitching. What are these guys in the pitching ranks? Well, the one thing, Gooch, about pitching and especially the bullpen is every year it's a uh, it's a bit of a crapshoot, and you, uh, you you can reinvent your bullpen year after year. Uh, when you go out and, and get a uh, Kirby Yates, Tyler Chatwood, what you're doing is you're, you know, um, with Yates, you're you're going off of two years ago, off of, uh, you know, a sub 2.0 ERA. I think he was like 105 in San Diego. So you're going off, you know, some past history. He had bone chips in his double last year. So very limited starts, I think, there, or outings. I think he only had six. And listen, <laughs> I mean, I hear a lot about Chatwood. Uh, he's a journeyman pitcher. With the you know just sh uh, sub five ERA, that's nothing outstanding. But um, in this in this world of um, stockpiling, and, and I think this is where COVID has changed um, kind of the game for the front office. Is it's a stockpiling of assets uh, due to COVID, and it's it's pitching, pitching, pitching because you know starting pitching and the abuse that these guys are going to go through in these seasons, and just all the different. Uh, gyrations that they have to go through it really is becoming you know kind of a war of attrition and you know we call it the pandemic of pitching which is you know it, it's nothing for a pitcher to rule himself out because of a the dollars the agent influence as well as the sensitivity at the front office level I mean there's no doubt that we're not dealing with the early 80s and Billy Martin and the Oakland A's here you know like throwing guys complete game night after night this just right. doesn't happen anymore so um, the Blue Jays have to figure out that, you know, the compilation, Dolis, Chatwood, and, and now Yates in the back end, that's pretty strong, right? That's very strong. Now, obviously, you've got that, um, you know, that middle part of the game where you want to get a hold or you want to get somebody to extend that fourth, fifth, sixth inning. This is where you start to get more flexibility. Maybe you throw some younger guys in there. Or you allow some veterans, even some journeymen, to be able to fill those roles. But it's still at the front end 
that you want to make sure that you start to backfill at a starting pitching position or area um, with a Ryu. I absolutely agree with you. And I think with the two relievers, you got nothing to lose. It's not like you're paying a big, big money fortune. And if you can get Yates at least back to his form two years ago, you got a potential star. So I, I think you, there, there, it's a no-lose situation, in my opinion. The one last thing I wanted to ask you, and, and I don't think this is Guerrero's fault, to be really honest with you. I think he was he was anointed a superstar before he even did anything. And yeah, his dad, one of the greatest, loved him. But honestly, what would you say to him? If you could sit down with him and, and just one-on-one, -on -one, would you convince him, like, brother, you can't play third. Like, you just can't play third. He's not a third baseman. Like, do you think there's an opportunity that he's going to understand that? Uh, I, I think one of the areas, and this is, um, this is okay, I, I get what you're saying, um, but I think what you want to do is, and, and smart managers, smart coaches, smart front offices, dangle the carrot in front of the uh, player to give him the belief and the thought that there's an, an opportunity. Everything I've heard, you know, right from Charlie Montoya up to Ross Atkins, Mark Shapiro is, we're gonna give him the look at third base because A, we feel that he deserves it. And one, the way that we look at him and the, uh, and especially now, I mean, he looks better than he looked coming into spring training last no, year. No so doubt. what you've done is you've motivated a player with the possibility and, it's not like he hasn't played third. He has. He came in and started. It's now, okay, we give him spring training. We give him a true look. We yes. see if the footwork's there. Um, but in the back of our mind, we know that we've got a, a transformed body, a transformed player, probably a more mature player. Not probably, definitely. And we got somebody now who recognizes that this isn't a silver spoon and that he needs to earn his stripes. And, you know, his bat needs to do the talking because, Paul, he can play wherever. You know what matters. It's that bat. That, oh, that bat no has doubt. to play. The bat has what, to play. Then, Warren, what do you say to the naysayer guy who goes, hey, winter ball, eight games, four errors? Come on, man. Some real good third baseman don't make four errors in, in a half a season. Well, uh, listen, I played in, I never played winter ball, but I played in the uh, Central America and South America in those fields. Not a like, great field, listen, I know. Not a great field, not a great field. I'm not worried about his hands, okay? I, I've never been worried. I'm more worried about footwork, and footwork comes with agility and speed. Proper yeah. footwork and positioning is what gives you good hands. Now, I haven't seen anything that says he can't do that because even watching him at a, at a bigger, heavier weight, he still had pretty good hands. Yeah. You know, so when you get to the big leagues and you're playing on turf uh, like the Jays or down in Dunedin where they're going to play, th those fields are pristine, okay? Like you rarely get a bad hop. So this guy's got talent. And I'll get back to the fact, don't get lost in the fact of where he plays. Let's get yeah. lost in the fact that is he going to hit? Is he going to be 30-plus home runs? Is he going to be, you know, OBP over 1,000, uh, you know, or, you know, uh, on base plus slugging, OPS? Is he going to be over 1,000? That's what you want. You want production from him. If you can treat him or teach him to play first base and be even a fraction of Justin Smoke at first, because I know he's got the hands, you yeah. know what? You're going to get the whole the full package. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather go out and get somebody, a true third baseman, yes. to play and move him over to first. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, last parts on uh, baseball. Then I want to pick your brain on how you feel the NHL has been going. But here you go. Paul Rosen's uh, brother, Edwin, Edwin. is not... He's not on the 40-man roster with the White Sox. What is his status? What do you think there? Wow. I'd love to get him back here. What do you think? Warren? Uh, another right-handed bat. I uh, I don't know. I'm not going to give him a lot to come back right now. I, I, I like him, but I'm not going to give him – I'm not over going to overextend. I think we need left-handed bats, Gooch. So, um, hey, you know, we got to balance out this lineup. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What about this? We'll give uh, Stephen the last question on baseball. Germano has it's too small. Germano still has to prove himself, although he had a good season until he got hurt last year. Yeah, I love what I'm seeing from the young man. I think uh, you know he's got certain he's certainly got lots to prove. He's still young. He's got he's got a ceiling. I mean, uh, to me, he showed a lot of moxie. He's got a lot of what a competitor has, 
And uh, you know what? I think he, you know, he comes back in a good mindset. I, I, I've liked Romano right from the start. I think his stuff plays. I definitely know his mentality plays. So I, you know, he's one. Of, he's in the mix uh, for that bullpen. All right. Well, you've heard it from our baseball correspondent, <laughs> Warren Saku. You're fantastic. Okay, let's change gears here. Wait, uh, let me throw my Leafs jersey on. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah, you look good. <laughs> what, what's really impressive here is that we've got straight goods from you, how good Springer is, and it was a good move for the Blue Jays. So they can't take that away from us. We were batting 50-50. I got one right, and one went to the toilet. So thank you, Warren, for picking it up. Let's go to the, uh, obviously, the NHL right now. I know you love it. Uh, I'm batting 500. Sorry, I'm batting 500. Should use the baseball analogy. Uh, going to hockey, Canadian division, you happy? Oh, I love it. I do. I, I mean, I, I know it, it seems like every night I'm turning on and there's Vancouver, Vancouver, Edmonton, Vancouver, Calgary. Uh, but, you know, just to watch, you know, Montreal go out and do what they did in Edmonton, uh, impressive. I think Montreal, to me, boy, uh, they're playing solid hockey. You know, they came in and beat the Leafs in the uh, you know, first game, obviously lost the second one. I like what they're doing. Ottawa's no pushover. They play tough hockey. Um, I, I think we're going to hear from them. Um, uh, Stutzel, that was an impressive first goal by Stutzel. Um, you know, kind of that that uh, off the ice, bang it through. I mean, a goal scorer's goal. Very impressed there. Leafs, listen, Leafs got to learn how to win the tight game once again. It's not about, um, you know, it isn't about fake toughness and uh, in, in, in trying to, you know, you know, mix up a fight. It's about doing the little things. You know, uh, I talk to my friends who are diehard hockey fans, just like you guys, and they say, listen, this can't be, a, it can't be a pseudo toughness for the Leafs. It's got to be the back check. It's got to be the working. It's got to be that grinding every game. I mean, Joe Thornton, you know, brings that type of mentality. He's done it year over year in San Jose. I know he's injured right now. He's going to be out. Hopefully, you know, maybe no more than two weeks. But that's the type of grit um, they, they, that uh, you need to have. There's, I watched the Stanley Cup Finals, and every team were blocking shots, you know, night after night. Look at look at in the first few games, the block shots. Uh, I, I think it was either Montreal versus Leafs or it was Ottawa. And it was a it was like double block shots. I think it was Ottawa had double the block shots than the yeah. Leafs. Like to me, guys, I know Spezza, you know, to me, I, I like the player. I, I'm I'm sorry. I just thought this guy gave his heart. And um, you know, I, I feel for Jason Spezza because I don't think, you know, the Leafs and, and, and Leafs Nation truly gave him his his just dues. But you know, some more of that grit, some more of that type of play. You know, he was the one guy it looked like who who stepped up in the playoffs last year, the limited playoffs for the Leafs, and and actually, you know, had that type of passion along with Morgan Riley. Um, I don't know, guys. Like, um, you know, I'm no hockey expert, but I'll tell you, I've watched sports and I know what it takes. And it takes a lot of guys uh, who don't want to be the Chiefs, but rather be, you know, the guys who fall in line behind the Chief. You know, stack up. You know, the foot soldier, if you want to call it. Yeah, I think this year more than ever, it's going to be your third line and your fourth line, your four, five, six, seven, and eighth defenseman, <laughs> and your backup goalie that are going to be critical in a 56 game uh, schedule. You know, it's funny because you said something about Stitzel, and you know, uh, you know. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. What? Can I get, you know, I'm bad with names. <laughs> I want to get you on names now, guys. It's okay. Tim Stutzla. Stutzla? Okay. Stutzla. Pardon. I found that out. Trust me. All the Germans Trust me. Out there. Tim Stutzla. Okay, That's so it. Perfect. we know we know the German background we have on the show with Gooch and you know when our our European correspondent in Shopee and everything. I love this kid. I call him to win the Rookie of the Year right away. I think he's amazing. Could have been the MVP in the World Juniors. Um, mm. But I was listening last night to late night radio on the fan. I'm not going to say the 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 guy who was on, but. What a moronic comment the guy made. He goes, I don't think this kid is that good. And that goal was not a great goal. Like, it really wasn't. He took it off of a bounce. And what kind of shot is that? I'm thinking, are you a moron? Have you ever picked up a hockey stick in your life, you idiot? The guy is incredible. That goal that was a highlight good. real goal. He could have played for the Blue Jays on that one. And you know yeah. that, Warren, that, that's all feel, right? He comes off an incredible uh, World Juniors. Uh, watch, we'll see the goal. Thank you, Val. Let it go, Val. Walk us through it. Look at it. Takes it. Look at that. Nice pass. Comes right back down. 
Look at back door, slips up, get an opening, boom. Honestly. Yeah, that's yeah, the one timer, and you're right. And the fact that the puck, I think, was elevated a bit. Like you said, it was a little bit elevated up into the air. I mean, you know, watch. Did you guys see by chance? Did you watch in the junior some of the um, the prep uh, where they showed the players practice? Yeah. In the Unbelievable. The they do? That one guy um, was doing rolling the puck. Yeah, yeah rolling the puck. I, I, I just, you know, this is the type of hand-eye coordination um, that to me is, is, is just a staggering. So, like you said, here it goes, you know, the, the shot back in, and then all of a sudden it takes that direction boom. over to him, boom, and one time. Look at all the fans. You know, hey, that's no different in Ottawa uh, than a regular season game, is it? Uh, in you know, Ottawa, we beat them on the show. Did I say that? Did I? Yes, For all my did. friends in Ottawa, and I have a lot of friends in Ottawa. Hey, you know what, guys? You better you, and Paul, you know that. that you know that too, Paul. Grievances, yep. Yeah, thank you. You know that he could have looked really stupid. That was a gamble. Yeah, and it, he proved that this kid's. That yeah, but kid's great really players good. gamble all the time. That's why they're great. And it, to put it in the short side the way he did, like I wanted to call so bad and just rip the uh, the host, but I figured I'd just shut up. I won't do it. Okay, guys, don't be question. Let me yeah. ask you both of you. Okay, I, I I'm trying to remember the name. I think he's from. I don't know if it was from the Finnish league or he's with Vancouver. He's the the young player. I don't think it's Ho not Hoagland, but who like Hoagland? He's the one who does that lacrosse oh, flip under oh, the bars. You know the yeah, guy yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, I know oh. you're talking about it. Um, yeah, it, it's okay. Sure Maybe we'll Mel, Mel, Mel will pull that up with. Yeah. She's yeah. Good at that. Oh, hey, listen, I want to go to the Leafs quickly. Yeah, okay, I, I don't cool. have much time, but Val, right, please no, pull please. that up when you can if you get it. Yeah. Uh, the Leafs. Yes. Listen, uh, Matthew left practice. As uh, Val has pointed out, I heard that this morning. Uh, we don't know what's wrong with him. Will he play tonight? And then Leafs rookie Robertson is placed on LTIR, long-term injury reserve. Yeah. Um, Joe's yeah. hurt. Do you think these injuries are maybe because they, they didn't have warm-ups? They didn't have any exhibition games? And yeah. they, these games are intense. Absolutely. Like, as you can see know. behind me, Edmonton, Toronto tonight. They, they, or, uh, uh, what the so warm up was right. like six? What was what was training camp? Six uh, was it six days? Six games? Like it was no, no, no games, no games, game. yeah. no games. Six days. It was six yeah. days of camp, wasn't it? Like prior. That's it. I, I, listen, hockey. Is, I, I don't know if it was uh, Val's got Brock. No. Faster. I'm not He's sure. From, it no, it wasn't Brock Besser. It was a, it was a Euro. Oh, okay. Euro European European guy. Besser's American. It was a European guy. Yeah, yeah. I like Brock Besser by the way. I've always okay. liked Bob Besser. I, I, I think he's solid. No, I, I guys, certain sports, like my sport of baseball, spring training is far too long. But you know why it is? It's for the pitchers. Hitters right. can be ready. Hitters are ready literally by the time March starts because most of them get in in early February with pitchers and catchers. A lot of guys report early. They need a couple games to see. And next thing you know, they're ready to go. They got to stretch out the pitchers. This is where, to me, in hockey – giving extra time to stretch out things like your power play, you know, uh, your PK, um, your goaltenders, right? They talk about Freddie Anderson. Well, yeah, goaltending you know, with no practice. Uh, right? You, yeah. Like, that's tough, right, Rosie? Like, Gooch, you you know, like, those guys, there's a, that's a field position. If there's ever a field position, uh, it, it's goaltending, right? It's like a catcher, no, right? You no kind of got to get in. Yeah. You got to yeah. see multiple pitchers. You got to see multiple shots from multiple uh, different angles from different uh, shot types. And, well, uh, hey guys, it's so Andre. It, it wasn't Elias Pettersson. It's the other guy, Andrea. Andre Svechnikov. There it is. He did it twice. You. He did it against the Winnipeg Jets too. Played for the Air, uh, Carolina. Yeah, yeah. not okay. Bad. Listen, Carolina. All right, listen. Yeah, Ovechkin, Samsonov, Kuznetsov, Orlov. All out of the lineup for the Washington. They've canceled the game due to it, them going out into one of the guys' rooms, watching, I think, uh, some Russian TV, ordered up some chicken wings, mm -hmm. and now the NHL has fined them $100,000 for violating league protocols. Four games. Four how games. many? Yeah, how many? Yeah, four games. How many more is this going to take before we start thinking, oh, boy, we're in trouble? I think this is a good one because I think Ovechkin's involved, and I think all the other guys are going to realize if you can if you can do that to Ovechkin, we better stay in our rooms. 
listen, this this pandemic, this disease doesn't care, right? Like I, no. I, I've come up with people that that said we had a, an in law over, we all had masks, and you know we were all protecting. Now the whole family's got it. Like this is a close friend, so you know they live right next to Toronto Western uh, Hospital, and uh, you know um, I, I just don't want to see us as as uh, you know those who either have the ability to transmit or the ability to catch it because it doesn't care how old you are as a matter of fact it's it's hitting more 20 and 30 somethings now than it is even the older population and i think you know the kind of the um this flippant attitude is that it, well it can't be me you know let's think about the hospitals let's think about all the people that need general surgery let's think about people that are going in for surgeries that they really need for other diseases you know like cancer and other yeah. things this yeah, is where absolutely. you can't just think about yourself, guys. Like these athletes need to realize, look at the NBA. I don't know if that's going to work. There's no hugging rule. There's no, uh, you know, uh, I mean, to me, the fact that you're going to put teams together, they're going to travel, you know, the, the virus is going to, to spread. The NFL was lucky. They have a short season. They play once a week. You know, they can shuffle the games around. You got to be really, really careful now with as many games uh, I'm surprised that baseball did, uh, you know, what they were able to do last year. I just hope that hockey and basketball just take a, you know, a realization that this is this is something that we've got to battle, but we got to be smart about it, and we got to get that vaccine out there and get it get it time. And that's all I can say. I don't know what more, you know, you're going to tell these young guys. What are you yeah. going to tell young millionaires? So they don't want to listen. Yeah, no question. And they, uh, yeah, I agree with 100. percent Listen, we're going to go right into our predictions. Val's going to come up. We do predictions. I want to hear your predictions with us, Warren? Uh, to some great games again tonight. We got uh, Boston Flyers. We got Montreal back against Vancouver and the Jets Senators. Uh, I was pretty good last night. I was, I was one for two. Paul, you were one for two, and Val with his smirk, two for two. I was the winner. The big winner of the night. <laughs> and on good Jets. love, the winner gets a lot. Yeah, yeah you a get can of beans. It's in the mail. My but can a five of beans pound can of beans. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> and in maple syrup, right, Rosie? Absolutely. Nothing better than a little bit of pork and some maple syrup. <laughs> oh, and those brown beans. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Hey, listen, more. we're going to come to you. Jets Senators tonight. Wow. Uh, tight game. Jets just played. I don't I don't see them necessarily going back to back. I mean, the Leafs, uh, although it was maybe one of the most boring hockey games ever. Uh, I'm going to go with the uh, Senators tonight. Score? Score? Just pull it, throw it out there? I'm going to say uh, it's a little bit more of a higher scoring game. I'm going to go 4-3 um, cents. Oh, okay. I'm going to go 4 I'm going to go for two cents. Oh, boy. I'm going to go for two Jets. Hmm. Okay. Now? Ottawa won the first one, right? Nope. Jets did? You know what? I say Ottawa oh, takes this one. Uh, you guys, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> Sorry. I don't remember. So, so long ago, two days ago. Um I say uh, Ottawa 4-2. I'm still a big fan of Matt Murray. So, All right. Well, we beat him in overtime, 4-3. Yeah. Montreal, Canucks, the Habs versus the Canucks. I'll let you gentlemen go first since I called that one right yesterday. Yes, sir. I'm going to go first then. I'm going with Montreal's coming back, and they're going to win. It was 6-5. In overtime. I'm going to go in a shootout, 6 5 in a shootout, was it not? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, five, a coin. four, three halves. Well, the backup goalies are playing tonight, Demko and Allen. And I know you absolutely have a love affair with Jake Allen because he's had such an amazing career. Uh, yeah, he's won a yeah. time to come. Yeah. Did he play? No, look, hold on a second. A lot of guys say to my backup goalie, Ben West and Amon, and Ben, if you're listening, I love you. You're a great guy. Ben, you want a gold medal on a ring. He opened the door. I played. Okay? Binnington played. Allen was there. He was waving everybody. He's a super nice guy, but come on. Let's they not get the season out. Stanley Cup. He's got a ring. He's got a ring. Give All right, move on. on. All right. I'm going to go with, uh, uh, what was it? Who's playing again? I don't know. I'm going to take Montreal 5-3. Oh, really? Five, yeah. Ooh, Paul. Why is that? Is that because Jake's playing tonight? Or we're going to you. Sorry, Paul. What was your number? What was the score you said? 
Five three Montreal. Five three Montreal. Okay. This is the best part of the show outside of talking to you. Uh, <laughs> we love talking to you, but these guys just go at it. I love it. I, All I right, love Lord, it. it's your uh, well. Deal. I don't know if I can trust Demko after I saw him try to cross that pass in front of his own net the other night. Um, uh, wow, that was a, it was a staggering uh, pass that he tried to put across his front front of his net and almost gave up a goal. I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to go Canucks 5-3 over the Habs. You know what? I think tonight uh, Vancouver actually uh, – sorry, Montreal actually uh, wins this one. They were, oh. they were on fire last night. I think it was just bad luck that they lost the game. Uh, last night, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'll go five four again, Montreal. Well, you're doing that obviously because you love that uh, Stanley Cup winning goaltender. No, I, 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 love, I think I love when, people go, when a game is won in a shootout and people go crazy on a win. One team got two points. One team got one point. It's a shootout. No win. No, but, no, but win. I think overall, like Montreal should have won that game, but hands down. I agree. Right? I watched uh, it. Loved yeah. it. Yeah. So hey, that's listen, the only reason why. Boston Flyers. This is going to be a good one because you got yourself a heart, and you got yourself a rask. Go with Warren first. We're going to get him off. Get him going. Get it early, kid. Yeah. Like, no, Carter Hart, eh? Two and one already. Two Karask, one and one. Wow. You know what? Boston, listen, I, I, I'm i not feeling Boston this year, so I'm going to go Flyers. I'm going to say this is, um, I'm going to say it's, um, I'm going to go 4-1 uh, Flyers yeah. tonight. That, that's incredible because that's exactly what I'm going to do. I think Boston is done. Their days are over. Carter Hart's looked amazing in two, brutal in one. You know, we got pulled after four goals. They lost 6 nothing uh, or 6-1, to one, I think, to Buffalo. But uh, I, I think uh, I, I'm going to go with that score, 4-1. to one. I want to ask Val one other question. In 1994, when the Rangers won the Cup, did Glenn Healy win the Cup or did he get a ring? He was opening the door. He wasn't playing. Yeah, so was Nick ring, Kipios, but he got a ring and a name on the cup. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, he's got a ring. Yeah, his name's on the cup. He didn't play you know what? No, I'm gonna, he I'm was ordering you on this. I'm going to challenge you on this, Paul. I'm going to challenge you. We're talking about goalies, though. We're talking about goalies. So uh, that just makes no about sense. Was the backup goalie. Practice. The backup practice. goalie is not playing. He's opening the door. Let me ask you a question, though, Paul. Who takes the most amount of shots in practice? Who gives a shit? It's practice. <laughs> practice. Talk about practice. See what I got to put up with every day, Sask. Okay, yeah, Val, yeah. you go next. I'm going last because yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you guys. I'm gonna go Philly also, but I'll go. Uh, I'll go uh, three one Philly. Okay, wrap it up at four nothing. Oh, Flyers. Ooh, the shutout. They're gonna have a shutout. For Carter. Hey, listen, uh, Shoppy saying it's 3-2 Jets overtime when he got it last time. Shoppy was right. He got a 3-2. I think it was 4-3, though, buddy. Good try. Yeah, that was the overtime night for all of them. Hey, Gooch, in a shootout, three points are awarded. Do you think if you win in regulation that three points should be awarded? No, that's football. Yeah, he's not, Soccer. not, not in hockey. No. Good try, Al. We love you, kid. Two and one. Maybe in the in the in the uh, Czechoslovakian league back in the seventies. <laughs> All right, we've been with our uh, European correspondent, baseball correspondent, Lauren Sacker. <laughs> Lauren, thank you. I hope we get you on next. When, what's okay? What's the timetable really quickly on baseball? What's going on now? Are there still movements? When's the season starting? Oh yeah, listen. They're they're they fell in stride with their regular uh, season cadence, so nothing was different, right? The pitchers and catchers will start to look to report in the middle of February. Then you get the uh, position players typically come in a week and a half uh, later, and games are started, uh, you know, a few days before March, and then you get into you know obviously the the, the heat of the game. I haven't heard anything different yet in a, in a shortened spring training. Um, you know, right now the Jays are scheduled to play out of Dunedin. Um, you know, that looks like it's where it's going to be a beautiful new renovations. Uh, I've heard everybody rave. Pete Walker was raving about, you know, this new, um, you know, pitching clinic they have down there, this whole pitching, uh, you know, setup that they've got training center. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be awesome. Uh, obviously myself as a season ticket holder, not going to see the Jays right yet to start the season, but fingers are crossed. I got my season ticket money in. I figure if and when there's an ability to put some bums in seats, then as a season ticket holder, maybe we get a chance to get in there. You know, one of those, you know, separated type of uh, setups and we get to see them. Uh, 
be interesting to see because the whole mesh has gone up down guys uh, just seeing that the uh, yeah. at the dome they put the mesh all the way down uh, you know all the way down to the end of the foul lines now too so as a season ticket holder i'm right down by the uh down by third base i want to see what it looks like um yeah, you know and, and i just want to get back to seeing live baseball right guys i mean let's face it uh, live music live sports live entertainment of any sort getting that They're together yeah, we missed. Or, yeah, we missed that. One, yeah, I want just uh, real quick ask a, qu a question, Warren. I heard that right now it looks like if the season does start, the Jays would start in Dunedin um, and then go to Buffalo at some point. Is that looking that way? Well, you'd have to uh, figure out where you're going to play uh, your Triple A team if they do go to Buffalo. Now, I think they've they've got a unique advantage there because I think they were 17. They won 17 of their 26 home games yeah. uh, in Buffalo at Bison Stadium or whatever it's called. Uh, I can't remember the exact name of it, but where the Bison's play, uh, I think you could you know start to shuffle around your your minor league affiliates to maybe have them play in other, you know, entities. I know Tampa's offered. I don't know how that would work, guys, um, you know, in terms of trying to do something with uh, the Rays. I'd rather see them go back to Buffalo. I think it was a yeah. huge uh, are, 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 advantage for them. Sorry, Warren, are, are the Rays finally going to get rid of the uh, Scooby-Doo shag carpeting on that field or? They're not. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. No, not it's, yet. No. And Warren, <laughs> I, I think it's Duntire Park in uh, in Buffalo still, and uh, the uh, the only team that was crying last year about playing there was with the crybaby Yankees who didn't like playing in Duntire Park. <laughs> yeah, no, Val. Um, if if you thought my joke about the Senators fans not showing up, well, listen, <laughs> it's way worse in Tampa. So uh, COVID uh, COVID uh, attendance in in uh, Tampa. Is true attendance in Tampa actually? So well, you get a free ticket no though. Yeah, if you have COVID, you don't have to pay. You get in free. I, I mean, no, it's great, great show. You've been watching Gooch live. Fortunately, Gooch has got to go on this very important call. I love you guys, Warren. Always a pleasure having you on. Can't wait till next week to find out what who I've screwed up with with a name in baseball, or I've told him the Blue Jays have signed him, but he actually signed for the Yankees. And I want to do a shout out to Joey Lyons. Always good to see you on Stephen Rosen. All right, last word to you, Warren. Yeah, listen, guys, uh, lots of hockey every night. I love it. Um, you know, baseball's around the corner. All we have is virtual right now in these sports. So I, I can't wait till we get face-to-face -face, uh, back, uh, as I said, uh, fans in the seats. But I'm going to keep enjoying it. And, hey, go Bills this weekend. My Bills are playing. And uh, uh, I, I think Pat Mahomes is going to play. I, I find it hard to believe he wouldn't. Uh, Andy Reid seems to think he could have played, but they had to put him through protocol. So, Go Bills. Loving what I'm seeing. Well, Love John he, did, he did practice this week. All so. right. yep. Good night, kids. There. See you. Good night, guys. Let's play some hockey.